Hello all, in this particular tutorial, I'll talk about how to set up the client or application level failover in DataGuard environment. The scenario here is primary database is hosted on a different server with different server name and IP address. Standby server is hosted on a different server with different server name and IP address. When DataGuard database switchover or failover occurs in DataGuard environment, how the client or application will connect to new primary database because now the new primary database has got a different server name and a different IP address. Now this concept has been shown on Windows DataGuard environment. However, exact same steps will work on Linux environment as well. So it doesn't matter whether you are doing this on Windows or Linux, same steps will work interchangeably. I've used Oracle Database 19C and Windows Server 2019 and the script used in this particular tutorial will be shared in the short description of this particular tutorial. Now what has been done is the data guard ha has been already been set up and this is my configuration. So currently the Aura P is primary which is hosted on Win19 primary and Aura S hosted on Win19 standby is standby. So the, we will set up the connection from the application server in such a way that the, now in the current scenario, the connection will go to Aura P. However, when the switchover happens, the Aura S will become the primary and the connections from the application server should go to Aura S and not to Aura P. So how to perform this? in such a way that you know we don't have to do any changes every time switchover happens and application can connect to the Aura P if it is a primary or Aura S if it is a primary. Now these are the high level steps. You will create a Oracle service in the database. You will start the Oracle service on the primary database. You will create a trigger such that service automatically starts when the database role is primary. You will use the service name at the application side to connect to the database. TNS names aura will do the changes and TNS names aura. And optionally, we will fail over and test if application can connect, connect to new primary or old standby. Now, if you see the steps, there are some steps that we need to do at the database level and some steps that we need to do at the client level. These are one time configuration setup. So you have to do this when you set up the data guard. And once you set up this particular data guard, every time a switchover or failover happens, you don't have to do any changes. The application or the, the client can connect to the database, which is primary at that point, point in time. So now that we have seen all the steps, let's go ahead and do this. So let's, let me show you how my environment looks like. So here you can see I got Win19 primary, Aura P. So the Aura P is primary hosted on Win19 primary. And if I show you the standby, Aura S, which is hosted on Win19 standby, is currently physical standby. So S, physical standby, Win19 standby. So S, S, S. So if you can see Win19 standby, S, S, and physical standby. And primary, P, primary. So Aura P is currently primary. Now, if a client makes a connection, it should come here. At this point in time, it should come here. And once the switchover happens, the connection should come here. Now that we have seen all of this, let me, yeah. So let, now that we have seen all of this, let's, let's, uh, let's do one thing. Let's create one transaction. So let's see if we have maybe, I might have it. So let's delete from employee. I do not know if there is anything. Yeah. And let's say select star from employee. So now the employee table is completely blank. And what we'll do is we will insert one record in the employee table. And you can see that we have got a first employee called Rock who had joined our organization. And I have done this transaction at the primary because you can only insert on the primary. So I have done this on the primary. Now we will verify what we will verify is we will verify that this particular transaction appears on the standby when we do the failovers. That's why I have done this particular transaction. Now let's go ahead and set up our failover environment. So create Oracle service, start the Oracle service, create a trigger. So let's to do that. I got here. So I'm using the DBMS service, create service command and DBMS service, start service command to start the service. And then I'm creating a trigger and that trigger will be activated on the startup 
and all that it does it it checks the database role from the v dollar database and if the database role is primary then it starts the service that we created here so you can see this particular service it starts so let's do let's create that particular service and before creating the service let me show you what are the active services in the primary so you can see i got four services here let me clear the screen we can see we have four services and i'm running v dollar active services there might be more but it only shows the services which are active and here also you can see that we got four services now i just want to show you that the yellow color screen text with the blue in background is my standby yellow color with the blue in background is my standby and green color with white text is my primary so this is one way you can easily identify whether i'm doing something on a primary so if you see the background as green and the text as white then it is a primary and if you see yellow color and blue that's a standby or you can always look at this it will show you that it is standby and here it will show that it is a primary so now that we have seen that on the primary we got four active services and the standby we got four active services i'm going to create a service using the dbms service as i mentioned i'm going to create this particular service so let me run both of these command together that's done and now if i say give me active services you can see i had four active services now i got fifth active service called aura primary now this particular service will be running only on the primary it will not run on the standby so if i run the same command here you can see i don't have that particular service and the reason for that is because this particular service has only been started on the primary now let's go ahead and create a trigger which that particular trigger is responsible to start the service whenever the database role is primary so let's do that and that's created so our prep work on the on the database side is done now let's go to the client so i have got a client here which is a which is a again a windows server which is called win16 this is a win16 and let's go and let's go and add a entry in the tns name so oracle v19 database network admin and under the tns names which is currently blank let's add an entry and that particular entry will look something like this and i'll explain you how that entry is so if you take a look at this entry it says that failover is equal to on so i'm trying to connect to aura and it gives here it says two addresses the primary address and the standby address corresponding ports and the service name as aura primary and this is the service name that we created here this is the service name that we created here so what is going to happen is like if the if the database is primary on win19 primary then it's going to connect to the win19 primary and if the database is active or the primary on win19 standby then it's going to connect to it's going to connect to win90 standby so wherever the primary is there it's going to connect to that particular database from the client server so i've created this entry let's save this and now let's go to the uh, to the and if i now say sql plus sys slash password at aura as sysdba and if i see that where this connection is gone and i'm going to run some commands for that and you can see here that let me clear this screen let me run these two commands and you can see here and that okay i, I need to check why okay let's forget this so you can see here that win19 primary my connection has gone to aura p primary win19 primary so i made a connection to win19 primary and because the reason for that is because the connection has gone to win19 primary aura p because this is currently primary now if i and and before doing that i also want to show you if i run this select star from employee then i should be able to see that i got one rock 31st march so this employee had joined so to do, I'll, I'll do a little bit of formatting on that particular part so you can see that i got this one rock employee here so let's do this let me clear this yeah so now if, once i fail over once i fail over, and i'll do one thing i'll actually insert one more record when i'm connected to the 
where when I'm connected and I won't be able to insert the same employee because the employee ID is unique. So let's say one second employee called water had joined and let's commit this. And when I'm going to do the failover, the RIS will become the primary and then we should be able to see two records in our employee table called rock and water. These two records we should be able to see in our new primary and our new primary should be on win19 standby and the unique name will be RIS. And we will not do any configuration changes anymore because that's we have done. So only thing that we will do is we will initiate a failover. So to do that, to initiate the failover, the failover takes time and the failover I've shown you in the previous video, but if you want to see, then the, to do the failover, first we will be converting the primary to standby. So we'll be converting the primary to standby. So we will say commit to switch over to standby and then we will be canceling the MRP process and then we will be commi commit to switch over to primary. So these th steps we need to do. And since these steps takes a little bit of time, I'm going to pause the video. So 11.16, I'm going to pause and probably 11.19, I'll come back. So because it really, it really takes time. So I'll, I'll initiate the switchover in front of you. So now I'm going to convert the primary. So I'm going to convert. So here you can see the RRP primary. So currently Win19 primary, RRP, which is primary, I'm initiating, I'm switching it over to standby. Okay, so instead of doing the, instead of doing the, instead of pausing this video, let's not pause this particular video. So right now, the, right now, the, the primary is becoming the standby. So give it a minute. And what I'll do is, while the primary is getting converted as standby, I will also initiate the standby as primary because I really do not want to waste your time. So let's do that. So I'm going to stop the MRP process on the, and I'm, I'm now converting the, the standby to primary. So you can see the, this RIS was physical standby. It is switching over to primary and the RRP, which was the primary, which was the primary is switching over to standby. So now, the once the switch over is done once the switch over done what we are going to do is we are going to make a connection from the client so i'm not going to touch this i'm going to open one more command window let me clear this let me clear this cls and if i try to connect so let's see if i have got that i definitely would not have that so if i try so i'm going to keep it here if i sql plus sys slash password at aura as sysdba you can see that destination host unreachable so we are still not able to because the the startup the the, the database has not at started so this particular so that is the reason since the database has not at started that is the reason why we are still not able to connect from this but what will happen is what will happen is um, when when the when the database when the 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 standby o standby starts it will start as a primary and when i make a connection from the client the connection will go to win19 standby if everything that we have done till now is perfectly fine then the connection will go to win19 standby and those two transactions those two employees should be appearing on the new primary or win19 standby so give it a minute so let me give it a minute let's see so that's the primary has started and the primary has started as a physical standby so that was you can see here win19 primary was primary and win19 primary or rp is now physical standby so that's good and this one is starting give it a minute and this one was physical standby which will start as the primary so win 90 standby or as will start as a primary so give it a minute and once it starts we are going to connect from the client server from the client server and we are going to verify that our connection is now going to win 90 standby so I'm waiting for the startup to happen. It takes a bit of time. 
database mounted just give it a minute and now if i do this and now if i run this particular query you can see that we still have got it's now you can see and here win19 primary aura p primary win19 standby aura s primary so we are now connected to win19 standby which has become the primary aura s which has become the primary so we have not done any changes so when we did the switch over automatically the connection the client connection is now going to aura s or win19 standby because the tns entry has been set up in such a way that the connection will go to win19 standby so the failover the client application failover has worked so let's see this and the lock switch gap initially the lock switch gap was there now it is to standby and now if i run the final query to give me those employees let's verify that those two employees that we had on the primary so we inserted one more record and we had two employees rock on water so let's see if we got those two on the new primary and you can see we got those two on the new primary so looks like even after failover we are able to see the records and now whatever changes that we do on this new primary will go back to the old standby so this is the this is the way we set up the we set up the failover for the data guard environment the client app failover and it's pretty basically pretty simple all that we have to do is create the service start the service and create a trigger such that automatically service automatically starts when the database role is primary and use that service name at the application side to connect to the database i hope this particular tutorial was useful i hope you like the tutorials that i'm uploading to my channel if you do like the video that i'm uploading if you do like the content that i'm uploading please hit the subscribe button and please hit the like button thank you for watching see you in next tutorial till then enjoy and have fun thank you and see you bye bye